So what is going on guys? Welcome to today's video where I'm going to be addressing a comment that I get pretty frequently on my videos and that is, Andrew, do you have any advice for getting started into dirt track racing? Now in this video I'm going to be talking about things we learned when we got into the sport and hopefully you can take some of this advice and avoid some of the big mistakes that we made when we first got started. Now with that being said, we're going to go ahead and jump right into it. So one of the hottest topics in racing right now is how expensive the sport can be. Uh, if you've been around racing, you know that this sport is not cheap. I did make a video, however, uh, breaking down all the costs that it took me to get started into dirt racing, which I will leave up in the uh, corner up here. But I broke down every little thing it took for me to get started into racing that I need to purchase financially. Now, most people try to race within a budget, but I'm going to tell you whatever you think your budget is, multiply it by about 30, and that's really what you need. Speaking of budgets, you don't want to race past your means because you can start to put strains on personal relationships if you're married, uh, if you have kids, and you don't want to uh, take away from them to go fund your racing addiction because it does become an addiction, uh, trust me, I know. Uh, but you, you can't just go spend every dime you have on racing, you know. You, got to take care of stuff at home and a lot of guys forget that and they end up putting themselves in a bad place they're taking out loans to go race and, and that's just not what you want to do so have a good reserve of cash laying around because you don't want to have a crappy life so you can have a nice race car. Now also keep in mind to get up front to compete with the big boys you are going to need to fork over some money for good parts uh, more horsepower, stuff like that, so it, you can build over time. You don't have to spend it all at once, but be smart with your money. Don't, don't be an idiot. Race cars tend to take up a lot of your uh, time during the week. A lot of people don't really realize this, especially if they're coming from the stands. Uh, they see, you know, the time it takes at the racetrack to uh, you know, make adjustments between races and whatnot. But a lot of people who are involved in sport don't see the hours it takes during the week to not only wash the car, but make sure all the bolts are good on the car, make sure nothing's falling apart, make repairs and setup work. Now, luckily with the way my work schedule works, sometimes I have a good amount or a good chunk of time during the week that I can get everything done on the race car so I can get it all washed, bolt checked, everything in maybe four or five hours and be totally done with it uh, for the week unless I have to make repairs. But a lot of people don't see that behind the scenes stuff. So when you start off uh, racing, especially when you're building the car, you're gonna be putting in a lot of hours on it. You know, not only during the week, during race season, but building the car as well. So be prepared to spend that amount of time on the car to make sure it's right, make sure everything's safe on it, but also keep in mind do have a life outside of racing so it's just like the money do it in moderation don't strain your relationships work on it when you can and a lot of people end up getting out of the racing because of how much time it takes during the week so just be prepared for that uh, if you've never worked on a race car see if you can go talk to a race team and let them uh, or see if they'll let you uh, come work on their car during the week help them wash it and uh, you'll get some pretty good uh, pretty good experience with how much time it takes during the week to work on it. So for my first two points, we've talked about the money and the time. If you are ready to spend lots of money and lots of time on a race car, you're pretty much ready to get into the sport. Now another uh, point or question I get asked sometimes is what class should I run? Now there's two factors in this, that, or at least two factors that I think are on, is what class do you enjoy? the racing in versus what is your budget. So if you want to go race super late models but you can only afford a pure stock, you're going to have to make some compromises. You may not get into the class that you want to right away. It's a goal to strive for, especially if it's one of those really expensive classes. I know a lot of guys who have started from go-karts and just worked their way up. Now granted, go-karts have gotten very expensive as well, but they worked their way up into late models, uh, sprint cars, uh, you name it, but they, they've progressed their career and they've gotten to race a bunch of different classes. Now personally, I love stock cars and that has been my favorite class or type of car, dirt car, 
since I was a kid. I do love late models, don't get me wrong, and I would love to go race one, but honestly, my favorite class are the stock car classes. Now, I've bounced around in between stock car classes because we have like a crate class, a, uh, a limited class, and then something that's a little bit faster than a, a pure stock or a factory stock. And I, I, I love the classes. Granted, it's a little bit rougher, but I enjoy it. I truly enjoy it, and I'm lucky that I get to race in the class that I want to race in. But if you're not sure, ask some drivers from different classes what they think about the class. What do they think is the best class in that area? Uh, a lot of people in our area now are going to the Thunder Bomber class or the uh, 602 Modified class, and those classes are getting really big, and it's in a way, they're saving money and they still get to be really competitive uh, versus going into something like a open motor class where it's like a run what you brought kind of thing. So go, go ask around. Ask the tech people what they think. Ask other drivers what they think is the best class and, and take that into consideration. You know, they may say this class is the best, but you want to go race this class. Again, you want to play within your budget, but go do something you are going to enjoy. And it turns out you may want to go try something different after you race the same class for a couple of years or maybe even the first couple of races you don't want to race that class anymore and you want to move to a different one. That's all part of the experience. Now the next topic is safety gear. Believe it or not, there are people out there who have the nicest race cars, they, they have the best uh, toters, everything, but they have the crappiest safety gear. My thought has always been, if you're going to spend the amount of money on a race car that you're already going to spend, go ahead and take another extra $500, $600 and spend it on good safety gear. Now this doesn't mean go out and buy a 40 year old fire suit that's been in somebody's attic where rats have made nests on it and buy it for $40 and call it good and expect it to protect you when something happens in a race car. Also. Don't go to Walmart and buy a motorcycle helmet when you need to have a true race helmet. Now most tracks will require your equipment to either meet an SFI rating or an SA rating or maybe even both. Now that means the helmets need to be in date, they need to be tested, stuff like that because that is designed to keep you safe. Now some tracks even require you to have a head and neck restraint such as a Hans device. Other tracks will give you a weight break for having one and then there's some tracks that don't have any rules on it. So spend the money on good safety equipment. Take care of yourself, please, because things can go wrong at the racetrack. You can flip over, you can catch on fire, so on and so forth, and you just, that's not something you want. Some people will argue this uh, fact till they're, or this point until they're blue in the face. And I personally think it depends on your budget. When I got started, I bought a used race car. I wanted to make sure I was going to like the sport, so I didn't want to take the, um, the uh, new car route because I didn't have the money or really the time to put it all together so I could go racing the upcoming season. So I think it's going to come down to what your budget is. Now with a new car, granted everything's new on it, it's not bent, uh, you know stuff's pretty much going to be in working order unless there's just a manufacturer defect or whatever. Uh, with a used car, you may end up having to fix somebody else's mess up. Uh, when we bought our car, luckily everything was pretty good and I didn't really have to do much. I replaced wheel bearings and um, built the car from there. I just needed a seat in the motor. But anyway, with a used car there are dangers such as people just trying to sell a car make a quick buck and it, it could have been sitting in the woods for 20 years and they're trying to sell it to you for a couple grand. If you know what to look for in a race car, such as like a good cage, make sure the frame's not all messed up. Uh, if you know what to look for with that, I would go the used car route and just shop around, see what you can find and, and make sure it's safe. Make sure it's not going to cost a stupid amount of money to go and fix all of this stuff that's wrong with it because at that point you might as well build a new car. And if you're not sure, Find somebody that does know these cars and 
just can give you like the best advice on it. Um, I have a chassis builder pretty much on speed dial. If I have questions, I call him and ask him about the car and whatnot. So he helps me out with that. Um, I feel pretty confident in my decisions on buying a used car, but I'll still ask him questions if I'm not sure because you don't want to get stuck with a race car that is completely unsafe. You're going to have to chop all the cage off of it and put a new one in. So. Keep that in mind if you're going to buy a used car you will save some money but also in the long run you're going to have to replace parts sooner so it kind of balances out but if you have the money and time to start a new car do it making sure you understand race procedures now <laughs> this may seem like a really small thing when you get into dirt racing but trust me there's a reason there's procedures in place. One is to keep the show moving, and two is to keep you safe. Now, you may know what the checkered flag means, you may know what the green flag means, but you wanna make sure you understand uh, the flags together. So, uh, the white and checkered out together on the side means two to go, stuff like that. Make sure you understand all that, because they're not always gonna tell you on your race saver, assuming everybody's running race savers but they're not always gonna tell you two to go or even five to go, five to go halfway, stuff like that. So you need to understand what the flag, uh, flag man's doing and you need to be paying attention to it on the track as well because there's some vital information in that. And not only understanding the flag man, but understanding the traffic light system as well. Now I know it kind of varies between tracks, but they're pretty much all the same, such as the caution, when the lights go out, we're going green, if they flash the green, uh, that can either mean you're getting ready to go green or you're about to get lapped. Uh, so pay attention to that stuff. If you're not sure, either ask somebody, ask a driver, or ask an official because you don't want to be that guy who keeps racing under caution and ends up blowing into another car and getting somebody hurt or hurting yourself. Make sure you understand that stuff because it can keep you safe, but it also make sure you're not that guy, that guy who's holding up the show. A little bit of setup knowledge goes a long way. So this is something I wish I had spent a little bit more time on before I got into the sport of racing. When I first started, we never set the car up. We just went and drove it, and then I drove however I needed to to compensate for how bad the setup was. If you already know how uh, cross weight and all that other good stuff plays a factor in a race car, great. You can go ahead and set it up where you go to the racetrack by yourself. If not, I would recommend finding somebody, uh, even paying them to set your car up for you or help you set your car up and learn from them. Um, most people will help you out if you ask nicely. Ask nicely, not demand it. And finally, keep in mind this support is supposed to be fun. A lot of people lose sight of that. They take it way too serious. They turn it into a job and it's not fun anymore. So remember, you're here to have fun. This sport can be your best friend or your worst nightmare. And unfortunately, I've let it go both ways too. It's been my worst nightmare, but it's also been my best friend. And that's just because I've made that mistake. So keep it fun, enjoy who you're working with, and enjoy the journey you're about to take because this sport is a lot of fun. You're not going to get to do it anywhere else. I mean, where else are you going to race 90 miles an hour sideways with other cars? Like, it's just freaking awesome. So enjoy it. Have fun. Don't take it so serious to the point where you're not meeting new friends. You're just being a jackass at the track. Just don't be that guy. Go have fun. Enjoy it make friends. It's going to be a lot of fun, I promise. So guys, that's pretty much all the points I have, or at least a little bit of advice I have to give for getting into the sport of dirt racing. If you have a question, leave it in the comments below, but also, if you're in dirt track racing, when did you start, and uh, what were some rookie mistakes that you made when you first started? Uh, if you have any advice to give the new uh, newcomers, leave it in the comments below. I'd love to see them. So, with that, guys, I want to say a quick shout out to our Patreon supporters. Thank you guys so much for what you do. I'll leave a link to that video. If you want to go check that out, check out our Patreon page and support us if you would like. It's much appreciated. But with that, guys, I'm going to go ahead and end the video here. Thank you so much for watching the video, and as always, we will see you in the next video.